everyone. I thought this month we would talk about cabled yarns. These are really cool yarns. They are bouncy and they're incredibly round. Uh, they're not flat like a two ply and they don't have any extra twist in them like a single skin sometimes have. These are great for socks and sweaters and I thought that I would show you how to make them. For those who don't know what a cabled yarn is, I'm going to sort of back up just a little bit. Cabled yarns are two plies that have been plied together again or back on themselves. So that means that you're taking a two ply yarn and you're literally plying it with another two ply yarn. First, I like to have a uh, bobbin of singles and my bobbin of singles is always spun with a whole bunch of S twist in it. So that means that I have spun sorry Z twist so that means that my singles have been spun with my wheel going to my right then after I spun all my singles I wind them off on to, into a center pull ball you can do this by hand um, around your hand using a bracelet plying method or you can use a ball winder then you just ply up a two ply all we're doing here is plying up a two ply so we're adding quite a bit of extra twist into our plying you want about twice the amount of twist there's two ways that you can do this you can add that twist while you're plying and try to get enough twist into your yarn that you have about twice the amount of twist you would normally put in or you can ply like you normally would and put that yarn through like you normally would ply for a two ply and then Put that bobbin on your Lazy Kate full of your plied yarn and reply it and put it back through your wheel a second time to add all of that ply twist that you need to create a really high twist to ply. Something to think about when you're making your cabled yarns as you're spinning away and plying is all of that twist that you put into your singles that you're now plying all needs to be balanced at the end so putting all of that extra ply twist is going to be balanced once you ply it back on itself and create your cable it doesn't necessarily have to be your two ply that you just plied you could ply it with another two ply you could ply it with another commercial yarn you don't have to ply it with a hand spun yarn if you're going to ply it with a commercial yarn I would recommend adding extra ply twist to the commercial yarn before you ply them together otherwise the commercial yarn will end up under plied when you ply them back together the really interesting thing about cabled yarns is they're very hard wearing there's very little of the actual yarn that is on the outside because it looks like a cable and so they tend to wear really well they tend to wear really really uh, nicely for socks and for areas of wear on socks like the heels toes on a sweater the cuffs so making cabled yarn takes a lot longer because you're spinning for four plies but you don't necessarily have to spin for an entire project for cabled yarns. You could maybe spin just the cuff of a sweater or maybe just the collar of a sweater or maybe just the heels and toes of socks and you'll find that your yarns will wear really well. These are very strong yarns and they're very round. The nice thing about cabled yarns as well is they tend to add strength to finer fibers. So merino, let's say for socks, is generally sort of not looked upon as great for socks because merino isn't a really super tough hard wearing fiber. But as a cable plied yarn, the merino might actually wear quite well for socks and it's something that you can experiment with and try. Now cable plied yarns can often be under plied or over plied. When you're plying, you need to think about uh, the fact that when you wash it, it's going to lose some of that ply twist. So be sure to add enough twist when you're cabling to account for that twist that will be lost in the wash. And of course, if it's under twisted after washing, you can always pop it back through the wheel and add that little bit of twist that you need. And the reason that you need all of that twist is because you're going to ply them together. So you're actually going to make another center pull ball 
I tend to wind my two ply off onto my ball winder and create another center pull ball and I ply those two yarns together so I take the two ends and you'll notice that my wheel is now going Z twist again so when you are plying up your two ply you're going to be plying Z twist again so the first your singles are spun Z twist with your wheel going to the right and then you're plying your two ply with your wheel going to the left or S twist and then when you go back to ply again you're going to be plying Z twist again with your wheel going to the right and that is what makes these yarns so cool I like to finish these yarns by winding them off onto my Nitty Knotty or Skein Winder. I throw them into a bath of gentle wool wash and usually lukewarm to warm water. I don't like to wash my yarns in too hot of water but warmer and then I give it a really good thwack and a really good snap and I hang it to dry. And that helps to open up the cable and just redistribute the twist. Cabled yarns tend to be very sproingy. Um, they tend to have a lot of bounce to them. They tend to have a lot of squoosh factor. Um, I really like cabled yarns for the color techniques. It often will muddy up the color a lot and make them very muted, but it can be very pleasing. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you especially to our Patreon subscribers. You're the ones that keep the show on the air month after month, and you guys mean the world to me. Happy spinning. <laughs>